Everything Film is supported by Vancouver Young Actors School, the elite training program for young professional actors in Canada. Their team of pros offer the most advanced training for young actors online, VancouverYoungActorsSchool.com, at VY Actors School on Instagram. Season 2, Episode 7, Everything Film, presented by Agency Click from the legendary Shark Club in downtown Vancouver, Joe Larry and Patrick Shelton. Our guest is Michael Downey, a content creator, a social media consultant, and the host of a really cool show. I've been doing that YouTube rabbit hole, man. I've seen so much Downey live in the last little while. Um, I first saw your promo on Czech TV. Friends of mine actually do a travel show that airs on Czech TV. Okay. So I tend to watch Czech quite a bit. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Wonder, you know, because I've traveled with them. I've seen how they do their show. So I was kind of in that travel show vein. Yeah. And then I came across Downey Live. And the stuff you do, first of all, the travels by train, which we'll talk about. But... I think in order to be a good travel host, you have to engage the audience. I would suck because I'd rather just be in a hotel bar throwing a clip or something like that. But you really got to roll up your sleeves, take your shirt off if you have to, jump in the water, do whatever to give your audience that experience. That's exactly right. And that's what I aim to do. And that's a, it's a, you have to enjoy it because, like you said, it's a lot of work, A, to get out there. Where I started in Newfoundland, it took a day and a half basically to get all the way out there. But then... Every, all the work you do to set up meeting with these people or whatever the activity is, you have to get fully into it. And that's the fun part for me. That's what I enjoy. Yeah. It makes it worth all worthwhile. Well, I- any time that I've been with my friends on, a, on some travel, and, and let's face it, there's been some great locations, and people think, oh, that must be really cool. Yeah, there's coolness to it, yeah. but there's a lot of pain in the ass as well because not everything goes according to plan. Nope. Flights can be delayed or transportation snags or tourism screw-ups or whatever it may be. So you got to be able to roll with the punches. Yeah. Have you had a lot of roadblocks thrown at you or have you been relatively lucky? Yes, but I've learned to roll with those punches because... I'm lucky that this is my full-time job. I've built into being a content creator. And when you have those delays, I used to think, oh, this has ruined everything. The whole trip has gone off the rails type thing. But now I lo- I can lean into that. Yeah. And it actually builds into the story for the audience that's watching. Goes, oh, no, look at all these troubles he's going through. And, oh, now he's getting a ride with a stranger. And it builds more story. And you meet more characters. And that's really what it is, is making entertaining content. It's almost like you want it to happen. Almost. There it's, are almost like, it's almost like, hey, if everyone goes smoothly, that's not as good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I and hear you. I hear you. On these train trips I take, they do get delayed. They're always running behind freight trains, whether it's via rail in Canada or Amtrak in the States. The last one I was on was delayed by 12 hours. And people I'm next to, they're missing their flights or the cruise ship they were trying to make. Right. But for me, right. I thought I was just getting better value for my money. I would paid for this trip. I'm getting an extra 12 hours for free. Well, I did see where you were boarding the uh, the train uh, or the ferry, I guess it was, uh, yeah. in, in Newfoundland. And you didn't have a rezo or something like that, so you, you were had to find a place just to crash. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, that's not fun. I mean, you know, you're curled up in a chair in a dark little corner of the boat uh, as opposed to having your own. So, again, you have to be able to adapt on the fly. You know what I've learned through making YouTube videos is no one wants to watch you be comfortable and happy. <laughs> they want to watch you be uncomfortable. My most popular videos are the ones where I'm riding 24 hours, 36 hours in coach class with no bed and trying to figure it out. That's what's entertaining to them. It's awful for me yeah. but if that means i get more viewers and i'm able to pay rent that month well then i'll do that once in a while well the other thing again as i said i have no sense of adventure I have, i'm a creature of comfort and i cannot get out of my comfort zone try as i may but for example like you're going to a little some off the wall places yeah. you're not necessarily going to find a subway or a mcdonald's no. or, or anything a major chain you're so you have to try the local cuisine but you have to again as i said i mean you embrace us watching you getting screeched in, in in newfoundland and i know that's a popular tradition but have you have your uh, taste buds and has your 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 uh, your your mind expanded based on the experiences you've had? I would I had have to say it has, but there are definitely some areas where it hasn't. And one example is I'm just not a fan of seafood. Yeah. And we are on mm. an oyster fishing boat in an oyster farm and they're pulling the oysters fresh out of the water going, you got to try this. And of course I do, but I don't like oysters and it hasn't, it hasn't made me like them anymore. But I think that I can be honest on camera and go, I've tried it. I'm sure this is as best and as fresh as you can get. It's just not for me. And I think the audience, they're like, you know what? I also don't like seafood, or they do, whatever the case. And we can all laugh at the situation, and and on we go. 
Michael Downey is our guest. Downey Live Travels by Train is his series, and uh, I think Train is a very underrated form of travel. I've, right. uh, as a kid, we did a cross Canada thing on CN from Vancouver to Did Toronto you? on exchange in high school, and prior or for, since that, I've done a few trips down to Portland on Amtrak. And I always tell myself, i got to do this more often because, first of all, they're not rickety old things like you see in old movies. No. They're smooth as can be. Yeah. And you meet cool people on trains. Uh, you meet the most interesting people yeah. on trains. They either have a lot of time on their hands or they just are train fans and nuts or love the countryside and just want to get away and see a part of the world wherever that train is taking you. Yeah. I love the traveling by train. It's slower. It's more purposeful. It's more adventurous. And you never know what you're going to come across or, like you said, who you're going to meet. And, and it looks to me like it was sort of born more out of necessity in your situation because you weren't flying or weren't able to traverse the world. Um, but it certainly it opened my eyes to it, just I, how much I want to get back on a train. Yeah. Well, the, I can tell you the first time I did it was I actually went to a wedding for a friend in San Francisco. And instead of flying back, I was like, why, why am I f rushing to get home? I do this for a living. I have the time. Maybe there's a more interesting way for me to get back from San Francisco to Vancouver. And I took the train 24 hours in coach class, got to see the whole coastline. It was an incredible trip. And the video took off and did really, really well. And so I said, oh, all right, well, let's try that again. And I flew to New Orleans instead of directly to visit my friend in Austin. And I took the train 24 hours again, this time with a long layover and again, miserable in coach class. Well, at least that's what I portray in the thumbnail is mm -hmm. look how awful this looks. But really, I enjoy the experience the whole way. And I try and show you how great it is, regardless of whether you're in coach class or in a sleeper car or a roomette or whatever you have. Have you had any experiences where, I mean, you know, because you're filming people, you know, generally I'm, I'm assuming you're going up to them and telling them, hey, I'm so-and-so and here's what I want to do. But, you know, not everybody is easygoing and warm and fuzzy. Okay, let's be honest. There's some people out there that are really, really difficult. Yeah. Have you had challenges like that? Or maybe they're not making it to air, but have you had them? I, I've been very lucky I haven't. Um, but I will say that YouTube has changed over the last six years since I've been doing this, where at first people were going, what are you doing? And now they see the camera and they go, oh, are you a YouTuber? It's that connection now that it's much more common. And people are almost excited about it, and they'll approach you. And if they don't want it, they, like, they can see a camera. It's a big camera with a big microphone I'm not hiding or secretly filming anyone they'll keep their distance uh, but I always like to ask first I'm like do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions about this sure and now we're good to go so I'm been as I said I've been d sort of uh, you know uh, binging on a couple episodes and there's m there's more to come because I want to see the entire journey across Canada but now that we're sort of post lockdown period and things are relatively normal ish again yeah um, what's the what's the plan going forward? I mean, is this going to do trains in other new jurisdictions as well? Yeah. So this travels by train. It's a series I built. It's a ten episode series. The epi se season one was across Canada. Season two, I'm filming at the moment across the states. I've just popped back very briefly, but I'm going from the most southern train station in America in Miami, Florida, to the most northern train station in Alaska, and doing the entire country by train on some of the most iconic and oldest and most scenic and the most luxurious and taking the most interesting trains and one ferry to get from Bellingham, Washington, five days up to Alaska. Uh, and uh, this Friday, I'm actually headed to the UK as well to continue on in the season three, which will be over there. So I don't want to give too much away. But no, but it, it's such a cool concept. And uh, what kind of response do you get? How has your audience grown? And are you getting feedback? Uh, hey, hey, Mike, why not go here yeah. or go there? The the idea for the series for me is not so much about every single train that I'm on, but it's about where the train can take you. That's why it's called Travels by Train. And along the way in the Canadian series, I partnered with the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. So I showcased one Indigenous tourism-based activity in each province, as well as partnering with the Coast Guard. And we got to ride on their hovercraft and just the really unique jobs that Canada has. And I hope to continue to do that across the states. I can already tell you, I've, you know, going to one of the trains, we end up on an Amish farm and they're explaining how they live life. And it's just the point of the train is that it takes you somewhere and I don't know where that is. And we discover it as we get there. Well, I, I've always found that uh, the worst part of traveling, in my experience, is the traveling. Right. Because, again, so many variables at play. And if you don't time things right, you can be sitting in an airport lounge for hours and what have you. But you kind of take that part of it out and sort of show... Okay, there's bad things to traveling, but here's the fun part of travel. I've actually, you're right. Normally, the the travel aspect is the daunting part yeah. between from where you start and your end destination. 
and I've kind of made the fun, the middle part, the actual right. travel, and the destination is just your bonus at the end of you get to experience. I hadn't actually really considered that before. That's mm-hmm. a, yeah. I'm, 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 Michael, I'm really interested in the whole YouTube thing, how you've done it, the process, like you're a content creator as well, and you consider yourself like, you know, a person that's built something on YouTube. So I always go back to like, and I mean, I hate to use the word monetize. Like yep. when did you actually figure out how to monetize this and have you monetized it to the point where are you still out of pocket to go on these trips and like like where are you good good question i learned how to monetize it before i started my channel okay. so i have a business degree in marketing and i had just been laid off from my marketing job which i loved at the time and had a little bit of severance so i took some time to travel and just do what i wanted to do and realized that i love traveling i love filming my travels and i came home and i spent all my spare time editing my videos okay. and one youtuber i watched at the time described how he made money And it clicked and I said, that's what I want to do. And I started my channel. I worked a junk removal job for my first year so that I would have a job that I would hate. So it would motivate me to make YouTube work faster. And then my second year, I actually took out a business loan to continue making it work. And by the third year, I was profitable. And I actually have two full-time editors at the moment and a manager that keeps the business So the money going. comes in from YouTube itself. Is that basically, or do you have... Yeah, so like e- every time you watch one of my YouTube videos, there's an ad at the beginning, and you might go, oh, skip ad, whatnot. YouTube shares that revenue with the creator 50-50. Right. So I make money from every single ad that's shown, but I also have sponsors that... I talk about directly in my videos. Okay. Then I license to Check TV and they put it on air and you can sell the content to whatever company you're working with along the way. Well, give a shout out to, uh, it, is it True Earth? Yeah. Yeah, because I was watching, so uh, that sounds like an interesting concept because you were in a hotel room eating oatmeal. Right. And, uh, you know, you're you're very concerned about the ecology and the, and, and the environment and stuff. So tell us about True Earth because they are one of your sponsors. They are one of my sponsors. I have a year-long partnership and they actually sponsored the entire series of the Travels by Train, which was fantastic to have a company on board that believed in me that this would be you know good for them and their business but they are a company that's trying to reduce the amount of plastic that we have in our household so the first thing they did is they took those big plastic laundry jugs the, the liquid detergent and they made them into these little sheets and you get 32 in a small envelope and so the actual transportation of laundry detergent from the factory to your house the carbon footprint is so small the packaging is biodegradable and they work just as well and now they've taken it a step further they now have bamboo cutlery they have all sorts of products to reduce the amount of plastic in your house so it was an easy fit for me and my travels so you had a job that inspired you to want to quit that job and and go traveling i used to write a column for the province newspaper and they were telling me that the most often pitched idea yeah. was travel because people want to find ways to get free travel right when you decided hey i'm going to travel the world or parts of it and and video blog the whole thing were people supportive they went oh yeah really serious it was tough so when i started the channel i was 29 years old 29 and a half if you want to be specific so six months in i'm turning 30 all of my friends are getting married getting promotions buying homes and here i am working a junk removal job with 600 subscribers trying to say i want to be a youtuber yeah. and they look at me like i'm just chasing trying to relive my youth and and make it happen right. but now they look at what i've done over the last five years riding on tugboats hovercrafts you know free trips to ski resorts or whatever it might be and they suddenly go Oh, you you did it right. I mean, you did it pretty well. But it's not easy, and there were a lot of moments when I almost quit, times when you're not as financially stable as you thought you could be by this point. You know, two years in, I only had 5,000 subscribers. That's not enough to make it happen. Uh, But then all of a sudden, one video pops off, you go viral, and you get a whole bunch of new subscribers, and now they're there with you for the rest of the run. Has there been any time in your experiences where you thought maybe your life might be in some degree of peril because of what you're doing, yes. where you are, maybe an encounter with somebody in a bar as you're trying to film your nice little piece? Now, the the point where I thought I was in most peril and thought could be permanently paralyzed was I joined a demolition derby race. And they said, hey, do you want to jump in the pickup truck with us? We're going to jump this truck through an RV. I said, yeah, I want to do that. So I have my 360 camera. We jumped through the RV. The suspension on this old truck was so bad, the seat collapsed. So we go down. I have major whiplash. But most importantly, the RV, as we smashed through it, it blew through the windshield. And fiberglass is coming through. And I had the weight of a couch, basically, on me in my lap. And I, I couldn't turn my neck for three days after that. And I was really worried I'd done something. And you're thinking, geez, I should have kept that junk removal job. And huh? the, the worst part is 
the video didn't do as well as I thought. <laughs> you know, if it, if it got a million views, fine, yeah, but yeah, yeah. no. Uh, speaking of views, how do people find you? Because I'm hooked on Downey Live Travels by Train. Uh, give us your socials. How do people find you? Downey Live on everything that's Downey, down, I-E. Downey Live, one word, and everywhere. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. I'm a fan, and, uh, yeah, and continue success. And I'm just curious where the adventure takes you next. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, guys. Cheers. 